In this video, I'm showing you simple techniques to add juice to your game. We're starting with a simple bouncing ball and we'll add many effects to make it juicy. We'll use the animation player, tweens, particles, screen shake, lerp, and a shader. It's going to be good, let's go. The GoGoDo Jam is back for its fourth edition and runs from May 1st to May 27th. It's a Godo festival with tons of cool events and a jam running from May 5th to May 15th. Join the event and enjoy sharing Godo stuff with other game devs. Link in the description. The setup I'm using is a simple kinematic body bouncing when it detects a collision with the floor. Let's start with adding an animation to the ball for when we collide with the floor. I create an animation player and a new animation called Bounce. I create a new key with the current scale values. Then later on, I create a new key for the impact. Here, I scale the ball quite a lot in the X axis and I shrink it in the Y axis. You can go as crazy as you want here. Then I create a third key, which is a duplicate of the first one to go back to the starting scale. Right now, the animation is not good. First, the keys are linear, so the movement feels very stiff, not smooth and natural. Second, the ball goes from a huge squash to its original scale and it's boring. Let's fix that. First, select all the keys and in the inspector, change the easing mode to ease in and out. Right away, it looks much better. Instead of going straight from a value to another one, we're going to have a nice curve, starting slow, ramping up, and then slowing down as we're approaching the next value. The second fix is to add another key in between the last two, where we're going to scale the ball in the opposite direction. When the ball is squished really hard on the wall, it's going to have some elasticity and we're going to see an opposing squishing in the Y axis this time. Two things are important to note here to have a good looking animation. First, the spacing between the keyframes is crucial. At first, the spacing should be super small as the impact is going fast and the system has a lot of energy. Then, as the animation progresses, the ball is losing energy, thus the keyframes should be more spaced. You can see the energy dispersing in the way the space between the keyframes becomes bigger. Second thing is to also reflect the loss of energy in the power of your scaling. The second scaling in the Y axis should be less pronounced than the first one. By playing around with the values, we arrive at this look, which is quite good in my opinion. To make the animation slightly better, you can also offset the position, that way your ball looks like it's colliding at the bottom and not just scaling from the center. To signify that something important is happening to the ball, we can change its color. In this case, it's pretty simple to do as the ball is white by default. We can simply update the animation to add a color to the self-modulate. What I want is to have full red for a short while around the first impact, and then I slowly go back to white. Choosing a color here can have a huge impact on the animation. Red could mean damage, so it's up to you to decide what color you want to use. To finish the animation, we could emphasize the deformation. The scaling we used can be called squash and stretch, which is a common animation technique. To make it more pronounced, we can use a shader that would deform the sprite in a more interesting manner. Here, I'm using the deform shader made by Matthews Carmo 31 on GodoShaders.com. Then it's just about updating our animation to use the squash value in conjunction with the scale. It's a small difference in this case as we are using a round ball, but it can be very pronounced with other shapes. Important thing to note here, because I'm now using a shader, I need to update the color using the shader as the modulate will not apply on top of the shader. I simply modify the shader to use a uniform color and then I multiply this color to the texture color. I then copy the keyframes I've used for the modulate to have the same animation. As you can see, just working on a good animation already makes a huge difference. But it's not finished. Let's move on to particles. The next thing I want to add is particles. Because the ball is interacting with the floor, particles are going to emphasize this. I'm creating two particles with two different speed. One is pretty fast, with lines aligned to the velocity of the particles to show the speed of the impact. The other is much slower, acting more as some sort of dust. The dust is also bigger, and thus can be useful if you need to hide stuff. It can be used to hide the fact that you're destroying something, for example. I won't go into the details of the parameters for these particles, you can take a look at the sources to see how they are set up. 
Then we can add screen shake, which is especially useful for impacts. There are many ways to do it, and you can go rotational or positional, for example. Usually, you use noise instead of just random values. I'm not creating the whole script here, as it would be a waste of time. You'll find the full script with the resources in the description. You can also use add-ons for that, if you find some you like. The script basically computes noise values to know how to offset the camera. It has a function called shake that takes a duration, frequency, and amplitude as parameters. Then I can simply call the shake function whenever the ball hits the ground. Screen shake is to be used carefully, as too much of it can be a bad experience for the player. For better accessibility, make it tunable in the settings. Check out my accessibility video for more info on the subject. Making the shake react to what's happening is a must. A small impact should shake gently, whereas a big explosion should shake the whole screen much more. You can also do directional screen shake, useful for example to emphasize a movement like recoil or an attack. Quick tip, I usually create a variable for the camera inside my global script, which is an autoload. That way all of the objects in the game can easily call the shake function of the camera. Another simple technique I like to use, especially with a moving object like a ball, is lerping its scale based on its velocity. Remember in the cartoons when the ball would be squished really hard into an oval shape because it was going really fast? That's exactly what we are going to do. Basically, we define two scales we want to lerp between. The default scale is when the ball is not moving at all, and the sprite deform scale is when the ball is going as fast as possible. Once those are defined, we need to know what is the maximum speed of the ball. To do that, you can simply print the velocity.length. In this case, the ball goes up to 25, so this will be the max velocity. Then, using lerp is very simple. You simply say sprite.scale is equal to lerp base scale times sprite deform scale, velocity length divided by max velocity. Velocity dot length divided by max velocity is going to give you zero when you're not moving and one when you're at full speed. This controls how much we lerp between the base scale and the sprite deform scale. This effect looks pretty cool on our example, but it can be even better in more dramatic situations. I used it in my course about game juice, for example, to emphasize the speed of the ball. Finally, to make the environment react to what's happening, I decided to scale the dots in the background to reflect the bounce. The background is a simple polygon with a repeating texture. To make sure the scaling is going to happen from the center of the screen and the texture, I simply put the node origin to the center of the screen. Now, to animate the bounce effect, I'm using a tween. In this configuration, I could use an animation player because the animation I'm creating is static. But by using a tween, I easily have access to easing curves that I don't have to create. It's a good opportunity to show you how I use the tween, and finally, it makes it possible to add dynamism to the animation. More on that later. I simply check if there's already a tween, and if it's running, I make sure to kill it first. This is to avoid starting another tween when one is already running. Then, my tween is done in two steps. The first one scales the dots with an elastic transition with only easing out in a very short time. After that, the second tween will go to the normal scale in a smoother cubic curve easing in and out and in a longer time. In this configuration, the tweens are going to happen one after the other because by default, the tweens are sequential. If you don't know what type of easing you should use, you can take a look at the Godot tween cheat sheets for reference. If you look at the elastic out, you understand why I'm using it and not in and out. This is to avoid having an elastic behavior at the beginning of the tween, as I want it to be only happening when we approach the maximum scale value. The tween can be used to make the effect dynamic. For example, the scaling could be bigger if the velocity of the ball at impact is greater. Finally, to make the impact even better, I added a hit stop. Hit stop is especially useful when you collide with something else that is also moving, like an enemy. A hit stop is basically freezing the game for a few frames. In this implementation, I did a hit stop which is only affecting the ball. You can, if you want, do a simpler version by changing the engine.timescale to zero. If you're interested about Hitstop, I recommend this video, which goes into much more detail. 
this was a short but hopefully useful video about game juice and how to integrate it inside Godot. If you want to learn more about game juice and go further to bring your game to the next level, check out my Godot 4 course on Udemy. In this course, I go over all the techniques I use to create game juice. I give you tips and tricks and I show you every step to go from a boring game to a cool and juicy one. Check it out, link in the description. Thanks to the supporters on Patreon who made this video possible, you're awesome. Tell me what is your favorite juice effect and if you have other tips and tricks you'd like to share, please do it in the comments below. If you want to see other videos about juice, check out my latest video about the secret formula for juicy movement using damped oscillators. Thanks for watching, bye!